Michigan Magazine is kept on the road by our many Michigan friends. The Michigan-made rebounding mailbox pool. Never again worry about the winter snowplow taking out your mailbox with this ingenious rebounding pool. Your mailbox takes a hit and keeps coming back year after year. Call now or visit their website, toughmailboxes.com. Rose Valley Winery committed to making quality wines from locally grown cold hardy grapes. Rose Valley Winery on Beachwood Road, Rose City. Discount Foods, Downtown Mayo. Find national name brand foods and merchandise at sharply discounted prices. Shop the smart way and please the family without breaking the budget. Discount Foods, Downtown Mayo. 33 Motorsports Park family racing fun for all ages and skill levels. Three tracks located on M33 in Oscoda County. Come watch or join in the action all year long. Developed for motorcycles, quads, UTVs, and snowmobiles. 33 Motorsports Park. Hello everyone, welcome to Michigan Magazine. I'm Barry Stutzman. We've been having a great time this summer at our Michigan Magazine Museum and on the road, bringing you new and exciting shows you'll be seeing in the coming season. Today in the show, we bring you inspiration to start planning for the coming apple season. We're talking to the apple cider king, Jim Parker, who tells us about his apple cider mill guide, a list of the most amazing and exciting family orchards in the state. Then we're heading to the Grand Rapids area to visit with bead worker and artist Camilla Tate of Rockford. Stay tuned, that's coming up this week on Michigan Michigan Magazine. Announcing the Michigan Paddle Sports Directory, or one-stop internet connection at michiganpaddlesports.com. It's now possible to explore Michigan's extensive waterways like never before. Michigan Paddle Sports Directory is a comprehensive directory of canoe and kayak rentals and liveries throughout the entire state of Michigan. At michiganpaddlesports.com, you'll find a great paddling route, outfitter, store, school, rental shop, or tour guide. Michigan's great waterways are waiting for you. Make it an adventure worth remembering by first visiting michiganpaddlesports.com. The Christmas of an autumn day in Michigan brings with it the Christmas of the Michigan apple. And with the Michigan apple comes the sweetest, most delectable taste of all, Michigan apple cider. The combination of autumn, apples, and cider is an irresistible one that will necessitate a family day at the cider mill. A trip to a Michigan cider mill has become more of a family event nowadays. Over the past years, the popularity has created cider mills that truly make a visit something everyone will remember. Besides watching the cider being pressed, many have other attractions to keep the excitement and the nostalgia at the forefront. If you're a Michigan cider mill connoisseur or would simply like to partake of that decades-old tradition for the first time, there's a Michigan couple who have taken it upon themselves to make the experience a pleasurable one. Through the travels of Jim and Dev Parker in a new guidebook called Sharing My Experiences, a simple guide to fun and affordable one-day family drives, you'll find dozens of Michigan cider mills and orchards from the UP down to Michigan's southernmost areas. We caught up with author Jim Parker at Porter's Cider Mill in Goodrich, Michigan, unique in the fact that you can draw super fresh apple cider right from the spigot. It's just uh, something that uh, started years ago with my wife Bev and when our kids were small. Uh, something to do with our kids to have wholesome family fun on, the, you know, a limited budget. Right. Uh, but then late, years later it became a hobby with me and now it's a serious hobby that I'm trying to see every place that sells apples or makes cider in the state of Michigan. So it's got a special meaning for you as far as a very good memories. Yes, it does. Mills. Yes, now, it this does. This one specifically does. Tell us a little bit about where we're at here today. Well, at Porter's, uh, when I was a little boy, like it says in my book, uh, when we'd play baseball, a bunch of us guys that stay together even 30 years later, 40 years later, uh, when we'd play ball in the neighborhood, uh, the uh, people in the neighborhood knew us and liked us as kids, and they when we got thirsty, we'd get to go drink water right out of their spigot, out of their hose. Okay. Well, at Porter's here, they still will draw your cider right from a spigot. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of neat because you can fill your glass up or you can fill your jug up with cider from Porter's. And it's very tasty and very good. Um, I list some places that are my favorites, which, like, of course, like anything, everybody has their own favorites, and Porter's is one of mine, mm -hmm. and that's one of the reasons. Plus, they have good cider. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and the, the setting here is really yes. rural and really nice, Yes, too. it's pretty. But this, you made it, um, it was one of your top ten, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. What would be your 
the most favorite of all the cider mills in the state of Michigan, or is that an unfair question to ask you? Well, I have, I have. You have several favorites? Yeah, I have several <laughs> favorites, but the place I like, uh, because she has old time antique heritage oh. apples, is called Kilcherman's okay. up in uh, uh, Northport, okay. which is up in the Leelanau Peninsula. Mm -hmm. uh, John and Phyllis uh, are wonderful people, just like all these people are. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you take the time to ask them about their place and about their history, they'll be glad to do it with you. They don't only not only make their day, but it'll give you something to share with other people like I'm trying to do with others through my book. Mm -hmm. How long ago did you start this book, Jim? About a year and a half ago. And you've got all this compiled already. I mean, yep. this is from notes you've probably been researching for quite a few years now. Yep, I've been doing this for over 30 years. Uh, Patrick O'Connor, who was past marketing director of the Michigan Apple Committee, he said to me, which I thought was in a kidding way, because Patrick and I like to joke around, he said, Jim, you had to write a book. There's so much in your head. Mm -hmm. I, like I said, I thought he was kidding. Mm -hmm. Well, about a year later, I said to him, I said, you were kidding, weren't you? He said, no, sit down and write a story. Right. Write a story about one place. So I did. I wrote about Eastman's Apple Orchard up in Wheeler. Uh, uh, he's probably got the biggest orchard in Michigan. Mm. He boasts that he has 1,700 different kind of apples. Wow. I've been there, he got snows, which are my favorite. It's a small apple, very sweet, snow white inside where it gets its name. And like I said in my book, they're small, you can put them in kids' lunch boxes. They're better for them than a candy bar. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, it's just been a, a, a lot of fun for me and that's why I want to pass it on to somebody else. Uh, now I'm doing it again through my grandkids and my nieces and nephews. Well, Jim, as we're sitting here at Porter's, you notice, I notice specifically that there's a little more than apples here. I mean, you have a petting zoo perhaps here at, at Porter's, and that's pretty much consistent throughout other apple orchards and, and mills throughout the area, isn't it? Yes, and uh, with, uh, like everything, anything in America now, you have to offer a lot of things to draw people out. And that's what a lot of places have done, which is great. Some places have pony rides. Uh, like you said, most places have a little petting farm where kids can go up and feed the animals. Um, I myself like the old time people. Mm -hmm. You know, the old ones, uh, there's a fella Bob uh, in Flint. Uh, his, his place is called Apple Lane. And of course he's got snow apples too, so that's another reason <laughs> I go there. He's got Grimes Golden. Uh, he's got Tallman Sweets, those are old time apples. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mentioned in my book that Bob's got an old barn stock full of memories. Mm. You just got to go there and talk to him and, and let the memories come from him and just listen to the place. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the ones I like. But I understand when I take my grandkids someplace, they want to have fun too, except with grandpa getting apples and cider. Right, right. Yeah. And a lot of these, most of them, are, maybe all of them are family-owned operations. Yes, they are. They did yes. go back away. Can you, do you know what the oldest one is that you have visited as far as? The oldest uh, continuously working cider mill is Dexter. Okay. Yep. Um, uh, Dick and Catherine Kaziski are, are very, very nice people. Uh, and they were very helpful with Bev and I when we started on our book because Catherine wrote a beautiful cookbook. Mm -hmm. And they spent an hour of their time on a, on a morning with Bev and I to tell us, give us tips on what we should do and what we shouldn't do. And something like that, you know, that's invaluable. Well, it certainly did pay off. You'll find Jim Parker's Guide to Michigan Cider Mills invaluable. It's perfect for the family with its planning tips and the user-friendly way the pages and locations are categorized. Find an area, find a cider mill. It's just that easy. We thank Jim for taking the time from his busy schedule of visiting those wonderful orchards to tell us about his project. I know we'll more than likely cross paths with the Parkers along those autumn side roads. When the brisk, bright fall days come our way and our thoughts turn to apples and cider, we'll turn the pages of Sharing My Experiences by Jim Parker. For more information on Jim's book, which is available online at the Michigan Magazine Museum, visit our webpage at michiganmagazine.com. Michigan Magazine is being brought to you in part by 
Canyons Lakeside Resort and Marina, located on the shores of beautiful Sage Lake. Get away to their newly remodeled, beautiful bed and breakfast, or their historic 13-room hotel. Special events and activities for all ages. Call now or go online for more information on this Michigan treasure. Greenbrier Golf Course, Sage Lake Road, Lupton. You'll love this beautiful, professionally designed 18-hole course with a bulky golfer in mind. From pro to beginner, Greenbrier will have you returning for more. Enjoy the watered fairways, driving range, full-service restaurant, bar with Wi-Fi, and gift shop. Greenbrier, Sage Lake Road, Lupton. Hingeman Acres, Canoe Livery and Resort on M33, just north of Mayo, catering to the outdoor enthusiasts. Cabins, canoes, kayaks, rafts, and more. Daytime or overnight trips along the world-famous Asabo River. A family getaway for over 75 years. Club X Sales and Service on Mapes Road, west of Mayo, your complete recreational vehicle sales and service connection. Visit their beautiful showroom of new and pre-owned ATVs, lawnmowers, power equipment, snowmobiles, utility vehicles, and more. Club X Sales and Service is also the home of the American-made Victory Motorcycle Line on display at clinics on Meeps Road, Mayo. First, you take a heaping helping of patients, add some molten glass, more patients, then add a generous amount of creativity and imagination. A touch more patience steeped with ingenuity, along with patience, practice, and perseverance, and more patience. This is the basic recipe for glass bead making, a beautiful art that stretches the imagination along with hot glass to new dimensions. Michigan Magazine's recent journeys through the Grand Rapids area led us to master bead maker Camilla Tate. Camilla crafts wonderful works of artistic beadery in her home studio, located just north of Grand Rapids in a rural section of Rockford, Michigan. Here we visited with Camilla to learn more about her love of beadery. As pet cat Ruby snoozed nearby in the tranquility of the peace and quiet that surrounded us, a perfect setting for any artist, Camilla displayed some of her favorite accomplishments. Bead making is kind of an ancient art, isn't it, Camilla? It is ancient, hundreds of years old, actually, mm -hmm. and has just been going through a revival period. Um, the proper term for it is lamp work oh. bead making. I see. And now you start actually from scratch in bead making, from uh, creating uh, kind of a liquid glass. Is it? Tell us about the process of bead making. Um, what you do is um, I work with glass rods and I cut them down to uh, about the size of a straw. Mm -hmm. Then they're about that big around. And uh, you actually, I should add that. A lot of the glass still comes from Italy, where a lot of color processes have still been kept uh, sort of secret in Venice, where that, a lot of those things were developed. Venetian glass. Type. Venetian yeah. glass. And uh, you melt the glass over an oxygen propane torch, is what I have, and you wind it onto a prepared piece of stainless steel prepared with some clay sort of mixture so it doesn't adhere to the metal. Oh. And wind that on and then decorate and embellish it. My goodness, look at the different designs here and the different uh, methods of, uh, of making these beads. Uh, pretty much beads are what, for, for decoration for through the years, is it been uh, pretty much? Oh, or? beads are, uh, beads tell the history of the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, beads tell all about how people have developed technologically and uh, there's always been um, a need for people to decorate themselves so to speak and even in ancient cultures you know starting off with shells all the way up to the kind of things we have today people want to um, give valuable things that are beautiful I guess or have them on themselves Goodness, now these beads are so different, so, I mean, there's different styles in each one of these, I would imagine, yeah. different, different properties to each piece of glass here. Mm -hmm. How did you get involved? What uh, stirred your interest in the world of beads? Come well, on. I have always, um, I've always been interested in beads since uh, the 60s, let's mm -hmm. say, okay. and sort of been a bead collector, and um, we even lived in uh, the Middle East for a while and my bead collecting sort of went berserk because I knew I wasn't going to be there very long and I started buying more beads and, and then you have to put those together mm -hmm. and then when I found out that you could make beads, well, that was it. I, mm. <laughs> I was captured immediately. I had to learn this. And there are many who are interestingly and actively uh, 
organizing bead shows, isn't there? Bead That's shows, um, the Glass Bead Maker Society International is, uh, is, has become a big thing and they're just having like their sixth convention. There's many bead makers in Michigan. I don't think that they're, um, they're a big organized group in Michigan so far, mm -hmm. but uh, there's a few of us around. <coughs> These little things called Milfiori are things I buy ready-made, oh, which you can combine into the process. I see. It's kind of, it's all part of the the piece there. I mean, it, right. I mean melted right into the melted glass. Melted right in. Oh, goodness. And then there is... Um, it looks like some are, are inside the bead, almost, or are they? Well, they're, it, they are inside the bead because there's a process known as casing, where you put clear glass over what you've done, and that gives it sort of that paper weight quality where it's down deep mm -hmm. and yeah and uh, the other thing now that we're using more of is dichroic glass which is this very iridescent looking stuff and very tricky to use I might add and all the little things that you create these little um, knobby things mm -hmm. you, those are all little pieces of glass that I make skinnier and pull out of a piece of glass and then use for dotting the bead. Mm -hmm. So you, you, there's just, you can go wild. I can see you really enjoy doing what you do. Oh, yes. What <laughs> is the fascination or the draw for you in bead making and creating? Hmm. Have you stopped and analyzed yourself every once in a while? Or <laughs> I guess it's the endless variety of things. There's just no end to what you can do. And a love of the color and the love of the, of mm -hmm. the you know, the shapes and things like that. Mm. When you do start making a bead, do you have a preconceived notion of what you want? Or is there sometimes when the bead takes over and does its own? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I, I usually have an idea of something I'm going for and it seems like when I'm in the middle of the bead, I'm usually thinking about the next bead I want to make mm -hmm. and how I want to make that different. And then you have these happy accidents that go on and you think, oh, I'm going to work with that a little bit uh -huh. and make that work the next time. And then you have things that never, never seem to work mm -hmm. and uh, you just are constantly trying to make something happen that didn't happen before. Was it hard medium to get used to, to get into, or was uh, just something that you naturally Actually, um, you can start off very small with just your little tank and your little mandrels, and and uh, but I knew that wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I needed it was I did that about three or four months and had a lot of fun with it, but I needed to get the big tank and um, the better burner and. So. And that's what we, we have happening in the next room here. Yeah, I mean, the over here, we, you pretty much is uh, constructing the beads and then beading them. This and is where I construct, straight. yeah. Okay. Got my TV going, there my coffee. Go. Lots of happy moments, too, where you sort of get into a process and you just keep on going, keep on going, because things are working just right. To watch an artist like Camilla at work is quite inspiring. The ease at which she accomplishes her goal comes through hours of dedication and the love of the craft. Camilla was kind enough to give me my first lesson in the art of beadery, and it was soon apparent just how dedicated she must be to get the results she does. Okay, now, what you need to do is pass this through the flame. The hottest part of the flame is kind right. of like right, right here. There. Okay. You can okay. see how that's a little hard on the arms after a whole oh, evening. Yeah. Do I turn it at all? Or just you can uh, actually just, just passing it through now to warm it. Oh, I see. Okay. And when we start to see it bright yellow like that, we're pretty much ready. Oh yeah, look at that. Uh -huh. Am I in a the little flame? bit bigger. Well, okay. you're you're pretty much. Okay. But actually, there is something to knowing where the flame is because yeah. a lot of times in the middle of making a a large bead, you ha kind of have to hold it. If you hold it out of the flame too long, it will crack right off I the... See. So you have to know where Ooh. is behind the flame, in front of... Right. All right, you could get that a little bit bigger, but now with your left hand, a lot of ambidextrous movement needed yeah. here. Yeah. Touch the glass to the mandrel okay. and twirl the mandrel. Oh, okay. Oh, man. Are you nervous? No. <laughs> okay, now you'll see it starts to get stiff. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. 
My beat ended up nothing like Camilla's, but we enjoyed the experience. As we were wrapping up our visit that day, we were delighted with the presentation she made of her artwork to the Michigan Magazine Museum, a complete necklace of her handmade glass beads. We'd like to thank bead artist Camilla Tate of Rockford for perpetuating the art of beadery in Michigan and sharing her talent with us at Michigan Magazine. Thanks for dropping by. We'll see you here next week on RFD. If you'd like more information on today's show, visit our website, michiganmagazine.com. Hey, don't forget to stop by our Michigan Magazine Museum this summer. Still a few weeks left in the 2012 season. Our next event will be in September when history comes alive with our Civil War encampment featuring the 1st Michigan Light Artillery with demonstrations of camp life and artillery firings both day and night and exhibits inside demonstrating Michigan's involvement in the Civil War. For more information on museum hours and activities phone 989-848-2246. The Michigan Magazine Television Museum is located in Oscoda County. That's in northeastern lower Michigan, midway between Fairview and Cummins on M33. This is Barry Stutzman for Michigan Magazine. Have a great week. We'd like to thank all those that help keep Michigan Magazine on the road. You'll find delicious food and fun at Timber Steakhouse, East County Line Road, South Branch, Michigan. You'll find delicious steaks, pizza, and a full menu with the best food in the north. Enjoy the fine food and karaoke fun at Timber Steakhouse, County Line Road, South Branch. TriPoint Connections, a church connecting to God, people, and community. TriPoint Connections invites you to rediscover church in a relaxed, refreshing atmosphere. Join us Saturdays for fellowship and worship. Rose City Drug, just south of the Rose City city limits at 2640 North M33. Featuring a state-of-the-art, completely automated, and extremely accurate, computer-filled prescription process. Here at Rose City Drug, we are family-owned and operated for over 20 years. We offer fast and friendly service. And we always take the extra step to make sure your needs are fulfilled. Randy's Restaurant and Bakery, downtown Rose City. Freshly baked daily, cookies, breads, pastries, donuts, homemade pies, and more. Randy's has a full menu to tackle the heartiest appetite, including pizza and hand-dipped ice cream. Taste the freshness and savor the good times at Randy's, downtown Rose City.